से साधु 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 सो डियर धम्मा प्रैक्टिस ड्यूरिंग दिस डेज वी कीप टॉकिंग अबाउट क्लियर कम्पिहेंशन साथी सांप जान्य और द डायरेक्ट परसेप्शन सो व्हेन इट कम टू लाइफ इफ यू जस्ट थिंक फॉर अ मोमेंट हैव यू एवर एक्सपीरियंस अ मोमेंट इन योर लाइफ विदाउट थिंकिंग or without thoughts even when you go to sleep even when you fall into sleep and sometimes always you have a inner conversation proliferation and keep talking keep talking keep, keep talking whatever you do in even 24/7 so why you never try yourself little bit give a rest or shut down this inner conversation and allow your mind to little bit settle down itself because if you able to experience that moment the life you see itself going to change so remember this everything is thoughts the whatever the the education or the wisdom that we say and other thing is the the information we gather and the emotions feelings and other thing is that the all the stress and the unsatisfaction fear anxiety this all thoughts who create that so the we are the one who feeling and accelerate and ignite that thoughts again and again again and again how by thinking so then why you not trying little bit to experience the the reality of the mind because reality of the the true nature of the mind not go with thoughts so the clear comprehension means that the mind settle down itself so in that clear comprehension that we previously we talk about few few uh, information the clear comprehension of purpose especially the what is the real purpose what you looking for through this all the practice and clear comprehension of suitability so how suitable is it uh, profitable for you or it is it practical for you to do certain things in uh, when you practice in day to day life and today we going to talk about so there are four details when it come to clear comprehension so today we going to talk about the clear comprehension of resort place so when it come to that there are two ways physical and psychological environmental and psychological so the place resort you have to have the right place to practice meditation and you have to recognize it as the right place because in the beginning if you get into the wrong place to practice meditation maybe you get tired and then you going to leave it so then getting in getting into the right place and in the beginning having a place that not disturb and uh, not busy and not that much sound 
and even that uh, incense or uh, mosquitoes like that in here in in this country in here in this area we don't have that much mosquitoes but like in our country sri lanka india and if you go out sometimes there are places so then you have to recognize the resort and also there are places and i don't know how it happens sometimes when you sit in that place you don't feel good but there are places when you sit you feel more comfortable and relaxed to practice in that place so then you have to find like that even at home if you try different different places you will recognize there are some places that you don't feel you, that in energy doesn't flow to practice meditation but there are some places you have to try you have to do a some experiment at home and seeing that which place is good then you will find that so once you find it you have to keep keep practicing that place that doesn't mean the place going to give bring you the wisdom no physically sometimes you feel comfortable that is necessary in the beginning for beginners so when when you come when you become a master with this clear campaigns and in any place you can practice but this is a journey that before you get into that how you go and reach to that so with the with the places there are four kind of places what are those four and you practice you want to practice meditation and then you go to a place once you go to that place because of that environment any more you don't want to practice meditation you hate meditation maybe something happen and then you give up and then you tell i hate practicing meditation so that is one way so you go with the the intention because of the the environment from outside reason you give up and another thing is that you go without any idea about meditation and then once you go to the place you start to understand and then you maybe you go the first time you go with, with the friend and you have no idea what to do but once you go there and from that place you start to like it and another place and you have no idea practicing meditation and you go there and you don't get anything and the same and nothing nothing happened you go with zero and you get out of the place with the zero and the fourth place you go to the place with the intention to practice meditation in that place you get the the exactly right help for you to develop the meditation and then you keep continuing so those are the four places when it come to clear comprehension of resort that is outside world so another way the resort mean your mind is the best resort your mentality your attitude the way you like towards practicing meditation so the mind is like the resort another way psychologically so that is in the beginning that we talk about the outside environment and now the physical mental condition so that is very important why it is important it like this sometimes that you have a idea to practice meditation and you keep practice it for a while then suddenly you go out so uh, as monks 
they used to go for Pindapata for the village. That's how the, in the teaching it's explained, especially. And the monk go to forest to practice meditation. And then from forest for Pindapata for food, they go to village. Once they visit the village, and sometimes whatever they see, that perception stealing their this meditative mind. And they go as a monk and they go as a practitioner with the, the vipassana practitioner. But once they go to the village, and after Pindabhata, they come back as an ordinary person. That means whatever they see in the village, and they steal, it is stealing their meditative attitude to the meditative mind. And then after he come back, and once he start to practice meditation, mind go like roller coaster. Oh, everything, whatever he saw and in the mind, then he start to think about it anymore. That meditative mind not going to happen. So for you also same. Sometimes some students call and ask, Oh, Venerable Sir, I used to come for your classes. And then I went to a different state and I start my job. And then I stuck there and uh, I didn't practice. I forget that everything. And then once he fired from the job and then he come back to LA, then he call again and then see what happened. So you'll go to some place and because of that place, sometimes your mind start to the, you know, this incident happened is sealing your meditative mind or your practice. So that is one thing. You go with the meditative mind from there, you lose it because of many reasons and attachment and then stealing. And another one, you go to, and the monk go to, monks go to forest. In the beginning, they don't have any idea about meditation that much strong idea they just go and stay a few days and as a vacation or rest and then they go to village and they start to see the village life an incident happens and maybe somebody died suddenly or maybe some accident happened or maybe two people fighting husband and wife fighting each other and maybe some you know the situations happen unpleasant situations and the monks see that and then recognize the danger of this life and he understand oh this is not going to be the same like this sometimes things change suddenly no, things can change and the people change suddenly. Overnight people change. And sometimes you, you know, you go to sleep as a husband wife. And then the very next day you wake up with the, you know, the becoming a, you know, the greatest enemy in your life, that person. It, it happened. You know that. And sometimes you, you know, you go to party and you meet with your best friend and you shake hand, you give a hug and it become the last hug or the shaking hand or the sharing the glass that you, you had in that party. Why? Within few hours, the both of you become great enemies anymore. No, things change. And maybe accidents happen, maybe that person going to die. 
No, that so maybe this the last day you're going to sleep and the you no, know, and the next day when you wake up, it is another life. It happened. So then you have to understand the danger of the life. So that, that's why when uh, sometimes uh, some student asked me message, Venerable sir, why you every day say this is the last moment we're going to explain in the in this very lifetime? Why we have to think like that? It is very negative way. No, that is the truth. The negative way is we thinking we have to more time. We think, oh, we can do, we can live for a long time. That's a, that is what negativity. Why? It makes you lazy. But how you know that tomorrow you're going to wake up? We don't know what will happen. So then that's why when you practice, when you sit, give you a best. And don't think about any other time. Just give your best thinking this is the last moment in your life. Why? Because one day, one day, it's guaranteed, one day it's going to be true. If I say you're going to live forever, it's never going to happen. But if I tell you one, one day, you're going to experience the last moment in this world, it's going to be happen. It's going to happen. Guaranteed. So then, who knows? It is the tonight or tomorrow or next day. So that's why when you sit for meditation, don't look for second chance. No. You have to always think it's kind of like that is the last bullet that you have for 100 enemies. That, that's how you have to think. You know. So, uh, and sometimes it say when it come to Vipassana, you become like a, you know, hungry teddy bear. So whatever you see, you, you, you try to get the benefit out of it. And it says in some, you know, the, the samurai, it say, you are in a battle, you know, with the hundred enemies around you and with the empty hand. But still, you have a desire to survive, not to die, not to give up. So that's the courage. You know, that's, that make, make you awake, wake up. So if you just think this is the last moment, then you wake up. So otherwise, if you think, oh, it's going to happen, maybe another few, few years you're going to be here, then you're going to sleep. So that's why some monks visiting the village and they see these things and then they determine, oh, as soon as possible, I want to, to attain to enlightenment. With that courage, with that strength, they come back to forest. See, the first monk, they go to village and they, the, the incident, whatever they see, and it is stealing their meditative mind. And maybe when they go up in the path, they maybe whatever they see, attractive things, or maybe beautiful girl come and, you know, serve the dana, and the, from the very next day, he give up. It happened. There are many stories like that. You know, and then see the next monk, he go to the poor village and they see the whatever the, the incident happened, then they, they think, he think, oh, this is, the, this is not good to hold too much. It's better attain to enlightenment as soon as possible. And then he come back and practice meditation and so. The third monk, and he doesn't have any, he just go to forest for few days to stay there and enjoy the nature, landscape and birds, sound, beauty of or the wild animals. And then the, he go to village and they, he, oh, he also see the, the needs of the people. And sometimes he start to advise poor farmers how to do farming and how to gather, how, how to make oh, everybody together. And then he start to organize the village and he start to work for the welfare of the villagers. 
and he forget about many days, but he enjoy that. So like that. So there are monks like that way also. That's why even in the, sometimes in Sri Lanka, you know, some other country, monks are involving in the politics and they think about the people and they spend their whole life sacrifice everything for welfare of the people and the nations and they, they, they go with it. So that also one kind of, you know, the quality in here. So the fourth one is he go with the intention to practice meditation. And then he stay in the, the jungle thinking about and practicing meditation and bring the fully effort to that. And then he visit the village for Pindapath or the Dana or lunch or look for food. And then he see things. And then he again encourage himself seeing that things. And he become more and more and more stronger with the meditation. So whatever he see, whatever he experience, he, he divert it to his purpose. Rather than allow that purpose to go away, he divert that everything and strengthen his purpose. So those are the, so it, when it comes as a mental quality, so yourself, your mind. So sometimes you practice meditation and after that you go to mall or you go to friends and party, you go to Friday night and after Friday night, one party, forget about meditation. I'll do it in next life. You know, so people like that. And then sometimes people, you know, practice meditation a little bit. And they, they have idea to, to find some, some better in their heart. But then suddenly they meet a friend. They start to dating or start to meet a friend and then forget about meditation. I want to enjoy the life. See, he loses it. He loses, you know, meditative mind. It's nothing wrong. This anything is not wrong. This all worldly nature, we are part of it. Only thing we have to understand where we are in this journey. Don't personalize. Only thing is you have to understand where you are in this journey and then from that place divert it to the right direction. That's it. We all, this all poor kind of people going to enjoy the life. Nothing wrong with anybody. Somehow, if they, you know, have the intention, somehow they will find a way to get into the right, right track. But somehow it is better. We overall, we see in a bigger picture, all these characters. So then sometimes you go, you have no idea about meditation. You just hearing these things and you heard it is hearing it good, doing it good, make you calm. And sometimes you think practicing make you more good. And uh, so like that. And uh, there's a student sent me a message that he looking meditation to become rich. And uh, then I explained him and then he told me, if the vipassana not allow him to become rich and he don't want to practice, he want to become rich. So you see that day, you know, sometimes you go away from it. So it's like that. And then another way is that uh, sometimes you have no idea regarding practicing meditation or anything and you little bit hearing it but when you go to the society sometimes you break up and then you go in great suffering in life and you are all the beautiful life become kind of like a hell and you have no option and then somebody say here practice meditation and then you come then you find it then you start to enter to that that also another way in during Buddha's time, it happened like, like Patachara. And she had a very luxurious life. And she was a very hard uh, woman. And she did whatever she wanted. And always she selected whatever her idea. But she went and married and had the husband. And then finally what happened? Everything washed away. Even the children 
wash it away. And then she had no options and came back and the parents, everybody died. Then no choice came to Buddha. Kisa Gotami, so her child died and no option. She went to the physicians and looking for a treatment. No, then finally came to Buddha. So like that, during that time also, as a final option, you have no any choice, you come to this. That also another way. And then the other one is you keep looking and you practicing and then you again and again, wherever you go, whatever you see, every day, you yourself ignite, you transform your all experience to your all situations to, to develop your practice. So that is the, the clear comprehension of resort. So the best way is that recognizing yourself where you are in this line and always remember, don't allow because of any reasons to, to, to let go your meditative mind. It doesn't matter where you go. It doesn't matter whatever the people you meet. It doesn't matter whatever the, the, the fun you have in your life. Five minutes, 10 minutes yourself. Keep practice, keep practicing. Keep it as your personal practice. Make it yourself. Somehow get into practice. Find a for ten, five, 10 minutes. Even in a NVR, busy environment, if you don't find anything, go to bathroom and lock it and practice there. And sometimes I used to do that like that way also. You know, so that's why it, somehow you find a way to practice in and without letting it go, you know, hold it to it, hold it to it. So that way you develop your mind and in a certain level, without thoughts, your mind able to, to get into a point to recognize things and by appearing, you recognize it. That is the clear comprehension. Sati Sampajanya clear perception and without thoughts, without any disturbances, without interference of your past or the future experience. If something come to your eye, ear, nose, tongue, body, mind, in that very moment, you recognize in the beginning it as it is and that recognition will take you to recognize how things come to be as they are. That is where your conventional life going to transform to liberation. So with that, I bless upon everyone with this good practice. May all of you be well, happy and peaceful. May no harm come to you. May no difficulties come to you. May no problems come to you. May you also have the patience, courage, understanding and determination to meet and overcome inevitable difficulties in your life. During this time period, May everyone stay healthy and safe. And finally, may all of you attain supreme bliss of Nibbana. Sabbhityo vajjantu sabbaro govinasatu mate bhavatandara yosuki diga yuko bhava ettavatach ammi sampadam punya sampadam Sabbe deva numudantu sabba sampati siddhiya etavata chami Sampadam punya sampadam sabbe bhuta numudantu sabba sampati siddhiya etavata chami Sampadam punya sampadam sabbe satta numudantu sabba sampati siddhiya Idam me punya kamanga sevakaya vango tu sambaduka pamunchitu. Yes.